Hey, can you guys hear me? How's it, how's it going, everybody? All right. Sweet. Yeah, so this is the first time I'm using... Um, so I just built a PC. I don't know if any of you guys were on the chat where I did my PC build. So this is the first time I'm using the, uh, the computer as opposed to the Mac. So I had to kind of set everything up again. But as long as the audio is all good, that's great. All right. Awesome. Good to see you all. Yeah, so so today, yeah, uh, I was supposed to do my Nomad video um, this week, but that kind of, you know, I got kind of busy and I just didn't have time to do it. So I thought, yeah, we'll do a, do a live chat. So I had an extra kit. Uh, so this is the TV out kit. Oh, yeah, audio is low. Yeah, so I'm using an internal... Let me see if I can make it a little bit better. Is it... Like, how bad is it? I might be able to... Let's see here. Maybe it's just... Is that a little bit better? Noticeable, but not awful. Let's see. Huh. Oh, it sounds distant. Yeah, so it's like, so it's like a built-in microphone on the, because uh, usually, you know, I would use the mic um, that I usually use for my videos, but that's that's not hooked up to. How do I have that hooked up? Oh yeah, it's usually it's hooked up directly to my uh, my sound recorder, which is here. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm definitely gonna have to get probably a different mic. On a scale oh, from one to ten, seven, that's not too bad. Um, okay, all right, well, we'll stick with it this time around. But um, yeah, so first time using the PC, so it's always something. Yep. Do I speak Spanish? I don't. You know, uh, even though you know my my dad's actually from Spain, uh, and my mom is from South Korea, but uh, I don't speak Spanish. Or Korean, unfortunately. Uh, that's mostly because you know my parents spoke English at home because that was their common language. But uh, I should speak both Korean and Spanish. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. One of my biggest regrets. I wish I you know had taken the time when I was younger, but uh, to learn both. Cool. Oh, Johnny. Yeah, you saw the PC build. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really liking the computer. It's easier to hook up all the cameras to it because I got like an internal capture card with uh, four HDMI inputs. So um, as a streaming PC, it's pretty cool, but I do need to get an upgraded microphone. Um, so that kind of be my next goal. But all right, so I know a lot of you are probably wanting to see how I kind of mod these things live. I don't think I've done a, the only other mod, wasn't really a mod, it was more of a refurbishing uh, that I've done was the, uh, what was it, the CDA? Um, which was the Laser Active, which is that really expensive um, Sega Genesis uh, slash PC Engine uh, console. Uh, I did part of that refurb live, but uh, I think it was over 200 capacitors I had to replace. So I did it over the course of several live streams. Uh, but this will be the first Game Boy that I'm modding live. So Korean tutorial next Thursday. That's a maybe. That's a maybe. But all right, so what I got here is the TV out kit. Let me zoom in. So this is the TV out kit from Retro Game Repair Shop. At least that's where you know where I got it from. Oh, you know what? My camera is going to be upside down. Let me fix that. I'm just noticing that right now. Um, how do I invert? So a lot of this stuff I carried over from. Right, let me go ahead and switch the view here. All right, yeah, so that's so this is upside down for you guys, but it's right side up for me. So let me see if I can go ahead and change that on the fly. So A7S, Properties, Configure, Video Format, uh, Flip. Let me see. Will that do it? There we go. Oh, no, no. Now the words are backwards. 
Um, apply rotation. What does that do? Huh. Uh, let's see here. Configure video. Not sure that's gonna. Oop. Yeah, cancel. Well, so this is a little bit no, because then you might you guys will probably see uh, everything will be backwards. So now that'll and if anybody wants to follow along, you know whoever watches this later on, it'll be a bit confusing. So let me see how I can go ahead and do this. Auto detect. Hey, so I don't know if anybody on the stream uses Streamlabs OBS. But how in the world do you flip the video? Resolution, can't change that. Color space, color range, buffering. There's a flip vertically, but I want to flip horizontally is what I want to do. Huh. Invert. No, there's no invert. Mm. Close. Transform submenu. That's true. I guess yeah. For those of you on the phone, you could just turn it upside down, but that kind of that kind of stinks. Ah, I can't believe. It. Yeah, I was kind of setting things up before. I didn't even catch this, or didn't even think to uh, um, fix that. Yeah, there's like a little cog, a settings cog, that I can open up some settings, but um strange if there isn't a transform menu oh i guess where would the transform menu be it's like can you right click oh oh maybe oh yeah maybe you're right maybe that's it properties nope it opens up the same the same menu oh but maybe hold on i didn't read all the things oh Invert selection. Oh no, nope, nope, nope. That's that selects everything. That's not what I wanted. Um, transform. Fit the screen. Flip horizontally. Nope, I didn't do it. Did, oh, that was the background. Uh, let me do that again. Where did I see that? Transform, flip, up, oh, almost there. There we go. Okay, good. I feel much better. Now let me go ahead and uh, flip this horizontally again. There we go. All right. Okay, let's get let's get started. All right, so we got the IPS kit here. This is the TV out version. So this is composite TV out, not HDMI. Uh, this is just the kit I had, an extra kit I had lying around uh, from Retro Game Repair Shop. I actually did a video on this. This is uh, the this is the one I did a video on several months ago. Uh, oops, but yeah. So this has the color palettes that you can change. Uh, it's a great kit, and I think this works especially well uh, if you're using a CRT. So, all right, yeah, so this is the one I did it before, and this is the one I'm going to be doing it to. So obviously this has quite a destroyed uh, polarizer on it, but we're going to replace the screen. I'm going to be using the same shell, because uh, I don't have an extra replacement shell, but you can see this one's pretty sun faded. Uh, it's, it used to be this pink color, but you can see it's kind of turning yellow, so it's yellowed quite a bit. But that doesn't really matter. We're just here to modify the screen. So, and I have the instructions in front of me, and if you, if you do want to follow along, the instructions are on the Retro Game Repair Shop website, and they're pretty simple. So, 
let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to try and look at the chat as much as I can. So I apologize if I miss uh, anything. I'll try to respond to folks. But uh, but yeah. All right. So first things first. Let's go ahead and open it up. And y'all, if you watch the channel, you've probably seen me do this a bazillion times. Oop. All right. So I've got to get the try point. Now, the one thing, hold on one second. I almost forgot about my, uh, Magnetic board. So whenever I disassemble a console, I always use this. Uh, this is one of the most useful tools that I have. Um, I don't always show this on camera when I do my mod videos, but this is just a really great way to organize yourself. So what I do is, let me put it a little bit up here, is when I unscrew or remove a screw, I kind of want to remember, but you know, for the Game Boy Advance, it's pretty simple. But for other more complex consoles, you want to remember where everything comes from. So what I usually do is if I'm lazy, I'll just kind of put them out in the layout of the screws. Because I like to, and this is just probably me being OCD, but I like to put the screw where I remove it. I like to put it back into the same spot. Uh, it's usually unnecessary, but sometimes you run into screws that are different thread pitch, different lengths which is, can actually cause damage to the shell if you put like a longer screw uh, in a spot where it doesn't belong. It could actually punch right through the plastic. So, as you can see, I'm kind of putting these screws into kind of the position that I'm getting them from. So these two are from the top, so, and then these two are from the sides, and then these are from the lower sides here. All right. Getting this thing open. Hey, yeah, I'm glad you guys find the videos helpful. I mean, that's kind of the main thing I want to do is just have a video that gives you kind of close enough shots. Because, you know, the one thing I found, uh, at least before I started doing videos, whenever I saw a tutorial for mods, they never really get really, really close. Some, some folks do. But sometimes it's nice to see like really close-up shots uh, of where the screws are coming from, what it exactly looks like. So, so that's kind of that was kind of my goal with the channel. It's just to make it as clear as possible how these mods are done. So we have one uh, Phillips or J JIS bit here in the bottom in the battery compartment. So we take that out, and that goes right there. So now another great thing about this is if you have a dry erase marker, you could actually draw a diagram of like where these screws came from. So that's another thing I'd like to do, especially with the much more complex builds, like when I did the switch light, that's what I did. Um, actually with the, I didn't do it with the Sega Nomad. Sega Nomad wasn't too complex. Um, I definitely did it with the uh, laser active because that had a ton of screws. All right, so I'm gonna push this up now that I've kind of showed you what I do with that. But now we can take off the rear shell. And this is pretty, eh, it's pretty clean in there. And there's some dirt down here and I might just take like a Q-tip and clean it, but set that aside. What we can do is we can go ahead uh, I think I have a spudger over here, and I'm just going to go ahead and while this PCB is um, still installed, I'm going to go ahead and remove this ribbon cable. I'm just going to push the tabs up. It's nice to do that before we unscrew the motherboard because uh, it's nice and secure. I'm going to take out these past plastic sides, put it over here. 
Okay. Take out the switch cover, power switch cover. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit more for you guys. Okay. All right. Um, let me here. I'm gonna. You know, I'm gonna try and look at the chat every so often. So, uh, let's see here. I, I missed a lot already. Sorry about that, guys. Um, oh, so this is a 40 pin. And you can see that by the number right here. So for those of you, now this lens I have up here isn't the best, so uh, might not be. Yeah, I think this might be as close. Oh, can I get closer? Maybe I can get closer. Oh, I can get Okay, so as you can see, it says 40 right here. So this is a 40 pin model. There's a 32 and 40 pin version of the Game Boy Advance. And the kit comes with both ribbon cables. So let's just go ahead and take out some of the parts here. Uh, once I take the motherboard out, I'll, I'll go over all the components. But here you can see the 32 ribbon and the 40 ribbon. So we're going to be going ahead and using this one right here because uh, that will fit my mother, but uh, this motherboard here. But if you have a 32, it also comes with it. So you are set no matter what. Okay, here we got the driver board, foam gasket, which if you guys watch the channel, you know how I feel about these. These aren't my favorite things because it really makes the mod quite permanent and very difficult to reverse without breaking the IPS panel. Uh, we got some insulating film, the IPS panel itself. We got a couple, uh, actually these are spacers here acrylic spacers and this kind of foam double-sided uh, adhesive strip which is probably used to connect this to the shell when we start to align the, uh, the IPS panel. And we got a bunch of Kynar wire. Oops. Oh gosh, could you guys not see that? <laughs> Sorry about that. So Kynar wire, let me go over that again. Um, insulating film, uh, foam gasket to adhere the IPS panel to the shell, the driver board, and our acrylic spacers right here. Those are our two acrylic spacers. Okay, let's go ahead and take the rest of this apart. So now once we're inside, everything is uh, JIS. I, I just say Phillips for short, but uh, you got three, one, two, and three. Oops. And what I'm going to do is, again, I like to put them in order. So that one, oops, that one was from right there. You got this one here. And this one here. Okay, so um, now all we need to do is you can just oops, put this and put this to the side. Now, the nice thing about this is the magnetic board is those screws aren't going anywhere, which I love because I always bump into the table and you know um, a lot of times if they're not secure, these things will just go flying everywhere. But all right. Okay, so now that we have the motherboard completely unfastened from the shell, we can go ahead and just pull it out. And you gotta take the ribbon out, kind of like that. Ta da! Okay. So actually, this is pretty clean. Uh, I'm, I'm, since I don't wanna. Ooh, oh, actually, uh, I take that back. This is not very clean. So if we look at the, <laughs> the membrane here, um, I don't know if it's going to come up on camera, but it is pretty grimy. So we'll, we'll at least give that a clean. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to really thoroughly clean this. I typically like to, um, but just because I don't want to, I can't really take you over to the sink with me uh, to clean all this. 
uh, I'm just going to go ahead and eh, just do a, a very cursory top level superficial cleaning. Okay. So, all right, let's get all this stuff out. <sighs> okay, so let's take the uh, original LCD out and kind of the method of choice for doing this is, you know, just kind of treat it like an ice cube tray and it just pops out. So uh, let's go ahead. Oops. And I just got to kind of stick. Mm. All right. There we go. Okay. Now, actually, what I like to do, and I'm not sure, I think I said this on a couple of my videos, uh, you can see this actually already has a gasket in there. And the nice thing about the one that's already, ooh, look at the foam is kind of, the foam from the, the rear, uh, a little bit of that got on here, so we're going to take that out. But uh, this is a much more forgiving um, adhesive gasket. It's definitely not as sticky as, the, as this one that comes with the kit. So a lot of times I like to just reuse this, and I might do that. For this go around. So I'm just kind of sticking it down. All right. And I'm going to look at the instructions and see if I can do it. But yeah, you can see this thing is uh, completely damaged. All right. Okay, so. Um, actually, I'm curious. I might need to take this out, actually, and I think there's some plastic place or these little protrusions around that I might need to trim down. Otherwise, I might put too much pressure onto the IPS panel. So I'll, I'll take a look at that um, here in a moment. Let's see if I can go ahead and take this foam junk out. I'm just using the back end of the spudger. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now, one thing we could do is, so I always have, you know, let me zoom out. Q-tips and IPA. And this is actually a really, I love this dispenser. I use this all the time, and I'm not sure if it's going to come out of focus, but let's see here. So, yeah, um, if you push down on this, it brings up just a little bit of IPA, and you can just put, you just soak it there, close it if you want, um, and then just apply it where it needs to be. So I'm, I'm just applying a little bit of IPA here to sort of, uh, it's a very light solvent. I'm going to use it to sort of break up the adhesive that the uh, that was left behind by the the foam. So And actually, you know, I can just like let that soak. So that's another thing you can do is you can just let it soak and break down the adhesive. And after it sort of does that for a little bit, you can just wipe it away. So Oh yeah, so Diego, you use something similar um, in what it sounds like kind of an, a lab environment. Yeah, I mean, so this I think a lot of the times this is I think used in medical and also I think uh, cosmetic and I guess for like makeup or whatever, you know, you can just like dab and people can you know remove makeup or something. Um, or same for medical, you can put alcohol and clean a wound. Um, or for optics, I guess you could have a a cleaning solution in there for lenses. All right, so, okay, that's, I think, as clean as that's going to get. I'm going to try and scrape away. There we go. 
It's a little bit more adhesive. You know, I just want to get it a little bit clean. I have my trash can over here off camera, just throwing away all this residue or residual glue rather. And give that a good clean. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, actually, while I have it open, uh, since I'm only doing a very cursory clean, where a lot of dirt tends to accumulate is right on the edges. So I'm just going to go along all the edges and give that a clean. Okay. Then kind of where the link port is. Where the triggers are and what the hey I'll even do where the buttons and the triggers are this is again guys I'm just doing a very top level clean not really spending a whole bunch of time doing this uh, around the speaker probably also a lot of dust can get in there I'm gonna clean that the button wells just give those a quick clean where the d-pad goes and you know start and select so okay um, so actually what I'm going to do now also is I will go ahead and remove this. I'm going to save it though. I'm going to put it to the side. So I'm going to try and remove it without uh, breaking it or tearing it rather. Because I think I'm, I'm going to have to do a little bit of trimming for the IPS screen. So I'm actually going to put this on my magnetic board. All right, so I think we're done with this. Ugh. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean. Uh, this is really dirty, and I don't want to mess with it while it's in this condition. So I'm just going to basically kind of lift up all this dirt with some IPA. Oh, yeah, gosh. Ugh, look at that. Nasty. Nasty, nasty. Okay. All right, that is world's better. It's good enough. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do the same for the action buttons, A and B. Okay, great. That's good enough. Those are pretty clean. And we'll just do the start and select. Okay, and then we're going to move on because I, I know you guys didn't come here to see me just cleaning a Game Boy. You want to see me modding one. So let's make sure we, we do that. Okay. All right. I mean, that's, that's pretty clean. That's good enough. Uh, actually, let me just hit these buttons. Just at least get rid of the dust, the surface dust, and and the alcohol will, I guess, sort of disinfect it as well. Okay. Okay, that's A button. Just getting the sides and the top. Okay, all right. That's good enough. Uh, actually, another thing I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to, uh, one thing I noticed, and I probably should have demonstrated it before I disassembled it, but this trigger, or sorry, this uh, power switch is a little bit, 
um, it's probably a little corroded in there. I noticed it wasn't powering all that well. So sometimes what I do is, I'll, if it's really bad, this one wasn't bad. Like usually it's bad if it doesn't turn on at all. Then it's you got to completely disassemble and clean it. What I like to do, if it's not that bad, it, it wasn't too bad. I just noticed if you jiggled it, it kind of would, um, you would kind of hear in the audio some crackling. I use this, it's called Deoxid. And I just put a little bit in there. And then what I'll do is I'll take some tweezers and very delicately move it back and forth and work the Deoxid onto, um, into the switch. And what that'll do is it'll remove some of the oxidation on the contacts but also protect it, uh, protect it from future corrosion in there. Um, so yeah, I, I usually put this in all of the switches that I deal with, um, and it, it works pretty well. And I, I've had this bottle for probably two years now, and I've barely made a dent in it, because you don't put too much in there. It's just a couple drops, and, and you're good to go. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? I'm gonna clean the uh, speaker. The speaker's pretty nasty. And yeah, one of the things that I find most enjoyable, um, and I'm not really showing it on camera, but I do like cleaning consoles, especially if you get a really dirty one. There's just something about, you know, taking something that's been very well played or neglected and just returning it back to kind of its original or as close to original condition. There's just something special about doing that. And, uh, you know, I, I just get immense satisfaction from doing that. Oh, yeah, this thing was dirty. Ugh. Uh, the, the one, one of the things that I, that I did that to, which I'm really proud of, and I guess I wasn't really expecting, you know, to be able to fix it, was that laser active. And, I, I mean, like I said, that thing had over... 200 capacitors in it i replaced every single last one of them and um and now it, it works perfectly which is incredible and i actually have a a video that i'll be uh, doing on on the laser active there, there's actually a mod for it um which i will be doing and showcasing it's the the laser active is probably one of my favorite retro consoles in my collection it's really really cool um and I probably should just do a video kind of talking about its history because it is very interesting. Now, let's see if we can. So, oh, just a kind of another thing I like to do while I have the console open is kind of clean the PCB a little bit, but I always try to avoid this. Sometimes I don't, but you can see there's like a serial number here. Um, it's not the most important thing, but if you get alcohol on that, it'll completely dissolve it and it'll go away. But uh, I try to keep the serial numbers on these motherboards if I can. So, uh, and really all I do with the, you know, the main areas I focus on are the button contacts, you know, just to clean those up. They're generally not very dirty because um, they have the membrane on top, which protects them. But, uh, you know, just get any dust or whatever off of it so okay all right so that's enough of that this is clean let's move on let me go ahead and read the instructions okay so and actually let me show you what i'm reading here so we go to the desktop um so this is the the website, uh, this is Retro Game Repair Shop, but the instructions are literally just pictures. So this shows you um, everything. Oop. And the instructions are here. So first, they want you to put some insulating, the insulating film on the PCB, or sorry, on the IPS panel. This tells you where to position the, uh, the double-sided tape. So actually, I don't need to trim anything. Hmm, okay. And then here it tells you where to put the spacers. And then this is where we get into the soldering. So this tells you where to solder everything. I'm gonna go ahead, I'll follow that, but, um, okay. And then this one to tells you where to solder to the, uh, I guess in the main board. Yeah, so these are the points we'll, we will be using. And this will be used to activate the TV out mode. 
so the L and R triggers. Um, and then that's it. Oh, actually, no, we do need to do some trimming. Okay, so here it says, note some housings may have two extrusions that need to be shaved. And actually, mine does have that here. You can see it. Um, uh, oops, let me. So there's kind of an extrusion here and one here. And if you, let me switch back to this. Uh, modding. I'm not sure if it's going to come out. Oop. But if you look here, oh yeah, there we go. Um, we got the extrusion that we're going to trim right there, and then we got one right here. So I will be trimming those. Uh, and actually, let me do that first. I just use a pair of flush cutters. So that'll get the majority of it done. I'm actually going to trim the whole this whole L shape here. Okay. Oops. Now, what I would usually do, but I am not because this is actually all going to be covered with my gasket over there is I would usually take my file and I would file those smooth. I would just kind of go over them and file them as smooth as I can. But because I'm going to be using the foam gasket, it's going to basically cover all the imperfections and I don't have to worry about this damaging the screen. Okay. All right. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that right now. So let's go ahead and put this back on. Now this might be a little bit challenging, so I'm gonna grab my tweezers. Okay. I'm gonna put this into the corner. Oops. Oh, sorry. Put that into the corner. this into the corner just little by little just working it into its position um, so the nice thing about uh, this adhesive it's not very strong unlike the one that comes with the kit so that's why I very much prefer if I can to use the one that comes with uh, the, ori the, the original gasket so we're going to basically just kind of set it into position. Okay. All right, so that's looking pretty good on this side. And make sure I get that on camera. Put this up here, that up a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, sorry guys, I got a runny nose. I don't know why. It could be actually uh, after looking at the those trigger or the membranes, they had quite a bit of it's kind of like fur almost. So you know this could have come from a a home with a with a pet. And I'm actually allergic to cats, very allergic to cats. So I'm wondering if I'm just getting a little bit of a dander or something. Okay, so that looks pretty good. What you want to do is double check, make sure you don't see any of the foam gasket on the through the lens because nobody, nobody wants that. So this is pretty good. It's aligned pretty well. And I'll show you another trick I use to make sure there's no dust on the lens. Obviously, the last thing I do is put the lens, but this lens is already on, um, so I'm just going to keep it on. Um, but we'll, we'll give it a little bit of a clean before. But Okay, 
So moving on, we trim the shell, so that's good. Now, following the instructions, let's go ahead and first step is to, okay. So the first step is to add the insulating film to the panel. Easy enough. So it'll be this one right here. So we just peel it. And where do my tweezers go? I generally like to use my tweezers. And oh, this is actually quite a bit larger. That's interesting. I think maybe the wrong um, insulating film was sent with this kit because uh, I'll show you in a second here, but uh, I don't actually remember that in the other the other one that I got that I installed, but you can see it kind of hangs over the edges, uh, the film, but not a big deal. I don't think that'll really get in the way of anything. So, all right, well, that step's done. That was easy. Okay, so next we need to All right, so next we need to actually install install the screen. Okay, so what that involves is actually putting in the spacers. So actually I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean uh, the lens before we put that in. Uh, but let me grab the spacers first. Okay, so we got this one and this one. Okay. Um, and let me grab something. All right, so what I have is this thing right here. And for the most part, it works. It's not perfect, but this is basically, instead of using compressed air, it's I use this. And what I use it for is I, I blow all the dust away. Um, so and this is, I think, for a camera lens, typically to uh, blow uh, dust off of a camera lens. Uh, but I use it for this all the time. And I basically just use that before I install the screen. Another thing I'm going to do beforehand is I have these, um, they're called Kim wipes. Now these are lint free and uh, they don't scratch, um, you know, kind of like a paper sort of tissue type thing. And what I'll do is I'll take some IPA and I will just go ahead and I will clean the surface. And I don't have to worry about scratching because these are very soft and they're lint free. And they don't leave any um, they don't leave any residue behind. And this is a very dirty lens uh, to begin with because the other side is just dirty. But I'm just going to go ahead and clean that. But it's got scratches on it uh, from beforehand. But anyway, so yeah, and I'm not too worried about it because this is mostly just uh, I'm just trying to demonstrate the installation process. Uh, this doesn't have to be perfect um, for me at least. You know, if I was doing it for a video, yes, I would like it to be perfect. But since we're just live streaming, not too worried about it. Okay, so now we need to install these uh, spacers. And I think, let me double check here. The thin one goes on the left and the thick one goes on the bottom. Okay. Easy enough. So now you'll notice there is like this uh, paper, and I, I, I want to say it comes off, but I usually just leave them on because to me that indicates that's the part that you know goes onto. You want that kind of facing you. So let's go ahead and install that. 
put that as far to the left as possible. Okay, it's as far to the left, and then I'm going to push it down. Okay, so this is going to align me horizontally. Okay, so that's there. It's not going anywhere because it's sticking to this. Then this goes to as far to the bottom as possible. Okay, easy enough. And again, it sticks on there because of the adhesive uh, from the gasket. Okay. Now, before I install the panel, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of as much of this dust as possible. Um, this is what I would do until I'm satisfied. Actually, what I would usually do is install this and then install the lens absolutely last. But because I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes and I don't have, I don't think I have a spare. Uh, let me see if I have a spare uh, glass screen lens because, yeah, maybe then I will replace it. Hold on one second. So I have one. Um, so that kind of stinks. Uh, okay, so now um, basically the way you remove this is you can just push it out. But oh, okay, it does come out very easily. Great. Okay, oops. All right, so we're just going to throw that out. But anyway, okay, so now that we have that. Okay, we'll install this last. Okay, so let me go ahead and all right. So now when we install this screen, we need to install it as far to the left and to the bottom as possible, okay? So first we're going to peel off the protective film. Ooh, and actually let me make sure something. I think the ribbon needs to be on the right. So I think I have that right. Let me double check. Yes. So the ribbon is on the right side. So actually we can keep that over kind of like that because we're going to put it down in there. All right, so let's peel this off. And it kind of stinks because actually the, the film is sticking out on the side, so I can only grab it on the left and the right side, but which kind of stinks. But okay, so I'm going to try and put that as, to, as far to the bottom and to the left as possible. Ooh, and of course the protective film is blocking it but there it goes it is in there and i'm going to remove this film for a second it's kind of getting in the way i'm going to reapply it all right so here you can see it i put it as far to the bottom and as far to the left as possible okay i'm gonna go ahead and put this back in Actually, that might have been the easier way to do it is to apply the film after you install the screen lens. Because you can see it kind of goes, it's a lot larger than the screen for whatever reason. Okay, now another pro tip, because we're not going to be putting the lens on to protect it, I like to reapply this uh, protective film. So I don't, so if I accidentally touch the screen, my fingerprints will get on it. So I just touch it like that. And now we're good. Now you also, another pro tip, another thing you want to make sure is you never want to have screws or small bits around because if you lay the screen down and there's like a screw here, you could puncture the IPA. Well, not puncture it, but you could really damage it because it would put pressure on a very small point and, and you definitely don't want that. So uh, make sure you're working on a very clean surface. Okay. All right. So we've got the panel installed. 
Um, I think now what we need to do is, yes, so now it is asking us to install the driver board. Okay, so we have the driver board right here. And I think it goes this way. So we're going to kind of put it down there. Well, let's see here. So, yeah, so it goes like that. And we're going to go ahead. We're going to open this little gate right here. And we're going to install the ribbon. Okay, so that's in there. And then we're going to lock the bale. Okay, so now it's locked in there. And we're good. Okay. All right, we're making good progress here, guys. So the next thing is they're going to, they want us to install and apply these touch sensors. So this top one, it is telling us to put it per the instruction. Uh, where was it? It was telling us to put it right in here, right in this area up here. I'm actually going to put it on the top. Um, yeah, instead of, instead of the face, I'm going to put it on the top there. So the way to do that is you're going to want to peel off the release paper on the copper sensor. And this is a very uh, tedious thing sometimes to do. Especially I'm trying to get it on camera and not get my, my big old melon in the way. There we go. All right, so this will come right off. Okay, there it is. So we've exposed the adhesive, and I'm just going to go ahead and put that. Might have helped to uh, sort of bend it into place a little bit, kind of like that. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it the way they say to do it. What the hey? Might be a little bit easier, too. Will it even fit? Actually, you know what? It won't even fit. Okay. Original plan. We're going to stick with it going in through the top. Whew. Yeah, this can always be one of the more finicky uh, parts of the install. Have that coming in from the top. <laughs> And I'll show you kind of where I put it once I actually get it in there. Okay. And then what I like to do is I, I usually like to take the spudger. And with the spudger, I just kind of make sure it is making good contact with the plastic. And... And it is on there. Good. All right. So there you can kind of see I put it right up there at the top. Okay. So it's going to kind of go like that. And the bottom one, I think it's said to put it... Uh, It kind of says to put it by the speaker over there, so all right, that's fine. And really, you can put this anywhere you want. Honestly, you just want it where it'll stay out of the way and you won't accidentally touch it. So actually, I'm going to put it kind of more towards the middle, uh, kind of furthest away from both hands, you know. So it's right there. All right, so I put the bottom sensor right there, right at the bottom. Okay.
All right, so we're done there. Um, so the IPS panel and the driver board and the sensors are all in place. Great. Now what we need to do is I think now we're going to have to start soldering. It's the moment y'all been waiting for. All right, so it says connect. Okay, so here we go. We're going to solder wires to these points here. So let me go ahead and make sure I can um, have the instructions right there. Is this as far as I can go in? So this is as far as I can zoom in, unfortunately. Uh, I'll show you a little bit, but let me turn my iron on. Get some solder. Okay, so I got my solder right here. Iron's heating up. Grab some water while it's doing that. Mm. All right, so looks like we got five pads up here, but we only need to solder to, I think, three of them. So we got AV, which goes to pin three. We got G, which is ground, I guess. Um, and then select. Do we need to connect to select? Connect select to TP2. Oh, I guess we do use select for something. RL. Uh, just bear with me one moment. Just want to make sure I'm soldering everything correctly. Yeah, RL. Okay, I guess we do connect to select. I'm not sure why we used that. Uh, just the L and R, I thought, is all we needed. But okay, that's fine. So we're going to need to solder to all five. I thought we only needed to do a couple, but. So make sure you have a clean tip on your iron. And we're going to just pre-tin each of these wires. Okay. A, B. Oh. Um, another thing, guys. Safety. So I have a fume extractor, which is uh, slightly off camera. You can see it right there. Uh, so I'm going to turn it on. It's going to get a little bit noisy, but I'll turn it off, so don't worry. And this removes all the toxic uh, soldering fumes away. All right, so I went ahead and I pre-tinned, sorry, tinned all of these, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wires that came with the kit, which aren't the best, but we'll use them. And we're gonna solder a wire to each of them, to each of the pads, sorry. Okay, straighten these out. Oh, that's interesting, it only came with Four wires. Is that all we needed? L and R select L R select ground. Oh, I guess that is all we need. Oh, A V. No, we do need A V. Oh, here's the extra wire. There we go. There were five wires. Okay. Now, one of the other things is the the amount they stripped on the wire is a bit too much, so I like to shorten them up a bit. So I'm going to do that to each one. I'm going to clean up these little bits and throw them into the trash. 
Now what you can do, and this is sort of a way I like to do it, is you can go ahead and you can actually tin each of these tips if you really wanted to. So I'd like to angle the solder up a little bit. Let me turn this up. And I just kind of go ahead and pre-tin each tip. All right, so that's tinned. That's tinned. Now, I'm just going to add a wire to each pad. All right, so all of our wires are now connected to the driver board, and we can move on to the next step, which I believe is soldering each of these to the motherboard. So let's see the best way to do this. All right, so it's saying we need to first, uh, first we want to solder, connect AV, of the uh, okay well the instruction English isn't written very well so connect AV pad of the black backlight PCB to pin 3 all right so we got to look at pin 3 on the AV or sorry on the uh, link port connector here that'll focus there we go so pin three will be, let me point to it with a spudger. All right, so here you're gonna see some numbering. So we got five and we got two. Okay, so it's basically gonna be one, two, three. Hold on, no, 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 maybe I had that wrong. So wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, all right? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Pin three is the bottom middle, I think. Double check in the picture. Um, pin three is, yeah, bottom middle. And then ground is any one of these uh, larger, any one of these kind of larger, uh, support things right here on the side. So either that or that you can connect to ground. Okay. All right. So I think the way I'm going to want to do this is let me see, how are they doing it in the picture? Let's see. So in the picture, they were basically just doing this. Okay. That's fine. All right. I'll do that too. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of fresh solder to pin three. Make sure I'm zoomed all the way in. It's as far as I can go. Okay. 
Okay, and then the AV wire, which is the first one here, the one all the way to the left. So that's good and connected. And then ground, I'm going to attach it to this one right here. So ground is the one right next to it. And that's kind of a thick pad, so it's going to take a little bit of heat. There we go. All right, so. Let me see if I can show you this. Turn off our exhaust valve. Okay. Let that focus. All right, so the leftmost wire up here goes to the pin three, and then the next one to the right goes to this kind of thick one here, uh, and that's our ground. And now I'm going to flip it like this. Or actually, no, wait, hold on. I think we're going to do to the L and R triggers. Let's do that. I think uh, we want to solder to those first. So let's see if that's what it wants us to do. Oh, well, okay. So it's now saying let's solder to pad TP2 for select. Okay, so let's take these wires. So TP2 is this is, uh, or sorry, select is this this wire right here. Mm, excuse me. Um, and TP2 is right here. It's a very small pad. I will bring it closer once I solder to it. Now the trick with these, sometimes what you want to do is just take like maybe, because sometimes there's like a little bit of a coating on there. So you can just take like an X-Acto blade and just very gently, just very gently scratch the surface. And that should remove that layer and make it a little bit easier to solder to. So let's go ahead and do it. And you can add maybe a little bit of flux if you want. Okay. And there you go. Now let's uh, tin actually our um, select wire, which is this one, real quick. Actually, let me trim that. sure y'all can see that. Okay, so that is on there. Just give it a couple tugs, make sure it's on there tight, which it is. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add some Kapton tape to sort of guide this wire so that it's um, you know kind of out of the way and doesn't kind of get beneath the membranes so turn that off so here I have some capped on tape just just a little bit you know don't need a lot okay and what I'm gonna do I'm going to route it uh, maybe like through here, maybe through the top like that. So all I need is put that right there. 
just a little bit of cat down tape just to kind of guide the wire. Okay. Okay. Now, what do we got to do next? Now I think we just need to solder to the L and R triggers. Oh, it's on the same side. Okay. Oh, I thought we, we would do it from the back, but it's saying to solder to, um, it's TP8 and TP9. So TP9 is right there and TP8 is right there. And I'll get a close up of this here in a moment, but let me go ahead and switch the Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and tin those up. Okay, it's TP9 and TP8. So those are your L and R triggers. Um, so let me see here. So this is L. L is on this side. So it's going to be this wire. Is this one yeah when these are um, when they strip these wires they really put a lot a lot on there uh, so it's, sometimes it's nice to just kind of trim them back a little bit So I think we are done. We are done with the soldering, I do believe. And so what we're going to do is um, let, let me first show you what I did solder. Um, okay. So if you, okay. So first we had TP9, which I believe is the L trigger select which was tp2 and then tp8 which was our uh, right trigger right there okay so all of our wires we're going to do a little bit of wire management here in a second but now i do believe we just go ahead and uh, install everything yeah okay so let's go ahead and put in our buttons I'm going to get our screws here so we can go ahead and mount this as soon as we get everything nice and routed. Okay. So, oh, oh, hey, um, Fananimous says, hey, Tito, great channel. Your vids are an invaluable resource for the community. Dude, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I'm just glad, you know, people find the videos helpful. You know, and uh, and yeah, yeah, really, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, all right. So B button, A button. Put in the membranes. And ah, the the light diffuser is something I always forget. So don't forget to put that in. I actually forgot to take it out, but uh, that's something that you just want to make sure. Because after you put everything back together and you realize your light diffuser is not installed, it's always uh, a pain in the butt. Okay. Okay, so everything is pretty good. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and route. There's a little uh, conduit on both sides here 
that we can kind of route the wires, I think. Let's see if we can do that. Eh, that's not really going to work. So let me, well, let's see what happens if we just flip it over. Uh, you know, it's going to get pinched, I think. Well, let's see what happens, how this fits in. And I probably should have trimmed the wires a little bit. Hindsight is 2020. Let's bring that up. Bring these up. All right, let's see. How do we how do we route these wires? What's the best way to do this? So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to route these wires. Um Let's go ahead. And where's that coming from? So that's not going to get pinched. That's not going to get pinched. Ooh, hold on a second. So right now, guys, this is kind of one of the trickier parts. Um, actually, that wire just stays back. So I'm just going to go ahead and tuck that. Oh, hold on, guys. One thing I forgot to do. It's one of the most important things is we got to install our ribbon cable. So remember, this was a 40 pin, um, which will be this one. And the way this is going to get installed is, let me just, so we usually have the gold up. So that'll go back around. So it's going to be the, gold, the contacts, the gold contacts are facing down. Just like that. So these can. Oh, and actually, you know, another thing is <laughs> uh, we have this other uh, film, insulating film, is we can also put this on top of the PCB. You know, just for that extra layer of protection. It's uh, it's probably not necessary, but hey, they include it. Let's install it. All right, so these two wires, the, the select and the L trigger, these are, I'm just going to tuck these behind because they just stay on that side. Um, and actually, the R, the R one as well. The R so the trigger buttons and the select button can, can come around. The only thing we need are the ground and, um, and the AV pin. Those are the only things that need to come out. So act actually probably, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, there's a little conduit right down. I mean, I'm going to take this membrane off. There's a little conduit right there. And I'm just going to route this through. I don't know if that's going to be coming out clear on camera, but that'll totally clear. Oh, you know what? But that now I'm left. Oh no, that's good. Perfect. Oh, I, of course I got to put the put the membrane back in. Let me see all these other wires. Make sure these are not getting in the way.
Hmm. Guys, this might be the hardest part of the whole mod, the wire management. So I am uh, going to grab There we go. Put that in that little guide. And now this wire here. I think we have that nice and situated. So I'm going to go ahead and screw in two of the screws. The other thing you want to make sure are these wires are not um, in any of the way of any of the uh, screw posts because you do not want to tear through the wire uh, with a screw when you're putting everything back together. going on here okay okay great so now this we can just kind of bend over kind of like that so it's out of the way And if you want to, we can actually tuck these wires underneath the PCB so they're not going to be, because we have a translucent shell, if you don't want these to be visible, which they really won't because the batteries will be covering them, but I'm not too worried about it. Eh, I'll just leave it like that. Uh, so now let's go ahead and connect the ribbon cable. I think I did this right. I think the um, gold contacts are facing up, I'm pretty sure. And then once that's in, go ahead and lock the bales. Okay, so that's good. Um, let me put in the last screw to hold the motherboard in. And we're just going to give this a quick test. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything is all good. Um, kind of nervous doing this live for you guys. Um, but yeah, let's give that a shot. I'm just going to put the, the rear on haphazardly. Ooh, what's going on? Ah. Is that going to cause a problem? That might cause a problem. Yeah, maybe I need to route. Oh, yeah, maybe that's better. Route it up here. The wires up through there. OK, so let's see. Hey, there we go. So it's working. So that's good. Now it's just kind of time to button it up. Let's turn it off. Um, and then we'll try out the TV out feature. Hey, okay, how about that? Um, okay. Now I'm getting kind of like a weird squishiness. Like it's not totally... Um, Shell's not 
I guess it is totally closing. Like, what is it? Eh, I guess that's fine. Okay. So the one thing I did not do was put in the LNR triggers. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So that's the LNR triggers. We got the kind of these little side thingies. Go right there. Put that. Get the solder out of the way. And let's see. Okay. Well, let's put in the one JIS screw. Oh, guys, huh. another thing I always forget. Oh my goodness, here we go. Not a big deal. Just one of those things. Now, always got to be careful. Uh, the power switch. So these things are really, really delicate, actually. Um, but yeah, so just, uh, just make sure you, you know, always put these in gently, make sure everything is lining up because you don't want to snap the little peg off because you'll have to replace the entire switch. Hmm. Okay, the bottom, switch to the tri point. Now, another trick um, is whenever you're screwing these in, it's always a good idea to uh, first screw the screw in counterclockwise. So you kind of go backwards, and then you'll feel the thread kind of fall into place, and then you can screw it in. And then you don't got to worry about cross-threading or anything like that. All right, so... Seems to be working. Great. I always, always do that. Okay. Always counterclockwise and then clockwise. And I'm sure a lot of you already know that. Eh, you know, these are just kind of small tricks of the trade. Okay. Um, well, so we, oh, okay, yeah. So now we gotta, let's make sure we install here the, okay, so now I can peel off my little protective film. Oh, actually, before we do that, well, let's first uh, peel this off. All right. Now, the one thing I never understood with these, um, the way these are kind of manufactured, the way they put these uh, kind of protective films on is that I, I can't get it all to peel all at the same time. And I'm always left with this center piece, which is always kind of a pain in the butt to get off. And I wonder why it's done like that. Like, I don't know if it's done on purpose. Um, but yeah, now I can take it out. Ooh, my finger is stuck. Ugh, there we go. And then very quickly, take that out. Make sure there's no dust on there. Actually, it looks pretty good. And then I go ahead and then drop in the glass screen lens. There it is. All right, so we're done here. Um, but well, first let's make sure it still works, even though we did test it. Okay, 
and there we have it. Okay. Oh, uh-oh. Now, you see that? Now, sometimes what that is caused by, so we're changing the palette. So it's really close to the data line, and sometimes that causes it to go haywire. So let's go ahead and fix that. Actually, I'm actually kind of glad that that came up. All right, so. So that actually might have not been the best location. I don't know why the instructions actually told us to put it there, but. Okay. Let's go ahead and take out all the screws again. But uh, let's let's see. Let's take a little break here. Maybe I can. I don't know. Does anybody have any questions about the installation? Uh, I know I missed a lot of the chat, but um, any questions or just maybe modding questions in general? Let's see. Aftermarket shell. Oh, so this isn't. This is an actual authentic uh, shell. This is not an aftermarket one. The centerpiece is to keep the glue off the. Oh, okay. I guess maybe that's just part of the manufacturing process. They put that paper there first, then they add the adhesive, um, and that way they don't get it in, in the center part. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, so DC, all, all of my live streams, uh, what I do is I actually, uh, I put them, I forget what the, um, what state it's called, but it's basically, they're not listed. But if you go to my live, I have a live stream playlist and all of my live streams live there. So uh, you can always refer back to my live streams uh, there. How would you say is the perfect GBA mod for the apps? The perfect would be uh, one of the drop-in kits. And if you search my videos, I, I have quite a few videos on drop-in kits. Any one of the drop-in ones I would say is perfect for the beginner because you don't need to do any cutting and you don't need to do any soldering. The hardest part is making sure you get the, uh, the screen aligned. Although I think maybe one of them fits in like almost perfectly. So you don't almost need to worry about that. I forget which one it is though. But definitely check out my other videos. Um, I do the drop-in kits, which I think are perfect for beginners. Uh, how do you decide to uh, to what mods you do for your own personal consoles? So um, my personal, I mean, I guess they're all my consoles, all the ones I, I mod on my videos. Um, I do like to keep some in original, you know, just to have like an unmodified one. But I just do all the mods that interest me, um, whether or not I use them all the time, you know, that's that's an entirely different question. But um, a lot of my favorite mods are the kind of some of the more difficult ones. I love doing the HDMI mods. Um, yes, Johnny Cha. Yeah, my videos are unlisted. That is the correct term. I, I just it kind of escaped me uh, what it was called. But yeah, all my live streams are unlisted because I don't like to put them uh, with all of my other videos because it kind of becomes confusing to people. You know, they might see uh, you know, live streams and they see my regular videos. So if you go to my video section on my channel page, those are all my normal videos. Uh, all of my live streams are unlisted, but they are in my, um, uh, my live stream playlist and anybody can see them there. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, I like doing the HDMI mods. Those are probably my favorite ones. Uh, because having an HDMI mod for your retro console is to me really awesome because I can just put it in my modern setup. I don't need a whole, you know, rat's nest of wires and adapters, um, you know, to kind of plug it in. I can just plug it into my television or my AV receiver and I'm good to go. Um, so those are kind of my favorite mods to do. Uh, let's see here. How do you decide, uh, what temperature did you use for, oh, so my soldering iron, I believe is set to 335 degrees Celsius. Let me double check here, which generally is good for most purposes. The only times I would change it is um, if I'm soldering to something that's all like on a ground plane and that requires more heat, I may, may bump it up to like 350. Uh, generally I keep it around 335, I think. Um, yes, 
yeah, so probably, yeah, the lighting makes this look a little bit different. It's pink, uh, but the front looks a little more orange, yellowish, because of the sun. It faded it. Um, on the bottom, yeah, that's a good call. I'm probably going to, that's probably exactly what I'll do, is I'll put the sensor on the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, that kind of stinks. i got to remove the motherboard after all that kind of wire management business. Yeah, so good suggestion, Mad Blaster. Actually, that's probably what I should have done to begin with. Um, yeah, so putting the sensors on the bottom, it's away from anything that could potentially mess with the sensors. Um, actually, I think I can just go like... I can probably just pick this up and pivot it. So let's go ahead and pivot. There we go. Oh, well, I can just disconnect uh, the ribbon. Oh, it's underneath. There we go. All right, so I'm going to try and ever so slightly peel off the sensor from the top. Okay, we got it. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down. I'm going to put it kind of right next to the other one, right here on the bottom. Great suggestion, Mad Blaster. Thank you. I wasn't even thinking about that, but that should be perfect. <clears throat> actually, yeah, they're right next to each other now. So that's actually probably, that was probably the better place to put it uh, to begin with. I don't know why I didn't think of that. So, all right, now let's go ahead, let's connect this back. Okay. Hey, Nathan, Nathan Schneiner. Um, thank you so much for the 10 bucks. Uh, thanks for doing an evening stream <clears throat> and answering questions. I love your videos and I'm always super interested to see what you have planned uh, for each week. Nathan, thank you so much. <clears throat> um, I'm glad you enjoyed the videos and uh, and yeah, uh, got plenty, I have so many, <laughs> so many videos I wanna do. It's just, I wish I could do more than one every week, but um, you know, I work full time. I basically do these after work. My whole weekend is spent doing these videos, but uh, uh, but yeah, I got tons and tons of videos that I want to get through, which, um, and the, and the different ideas and different people come to me with kind of mods they're working on, which I'm really thankful for, uh, so I can showcase for all you guys, but, uh, but yeah, plenty of stuff to come. Uh, I got some actually really exciting mods that I really can't wait to share with y'all. One of them is the Nomad one, which will be coming out next week. Um, and that Nomad actually shipped it over to Bob at Retro RGB, and he's going to be doing some um, testing on it. And, you know, I can put some of the findings in that video, but I think he might write an article probably for it, which would be a very interesting read, or he might even make a video. Um, so definitely, if you haven't checked out, you know, Retro RGB, definitely give him a look. Hey, Mad Blaster, thank you so much, man. Thank you for the $10. Really appreciate it. Got a uh, really cool lo little emoji, a leveling up emoji. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right. Let's put this thing back together. Uh, all right. I think if we just do, if we just wrap that like this, it'll all be good.
Guys, I have to say, I think the wire management might be the hardest part of this whole mod. Whew, it's a pain in my butt. It's a real pain. Okay, I think we got, I think we got everything situated. Okay, that feels pretty good to me. Okay, so now let's go ahead and ugh, grab these screws. Hey, uh. Chill, chill Rhino. Wow, thank you so much for the ten guys. I really appreciate. Y'all don't have to donate. Um, I mean, I appreciate it, but, uh, but yeah, no, thank you, man. I really, I don't know what to say. Um, thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. So, um. All right, just gonna put this back together. We're gonna do another test uh, just to just to make sure um, everything is still working. Every time you disassemble, you know, you really never know. <laughs> Either a you know a, a soldered wire could come loose, um, so it's always good to test throughout. So let's give this one test with the batteries. Didn't have to close that, but let's see here. Grab the spudger and let's power it on. Okay, hey, so it's not flickering anymore, which is good. Let's make, make sure we can get it back to, there we go. Hey, we can adjust the, adjust the brightness with the other one. Perfect. Actually, I just realized another thing I forgot to do. So let me turn this off. Yeah, it's kind of uh, doing these live. You know, usually when I when I do my videos, they're all planned out, and um, so I kind of have a list of what I'm supposed to do. But I'm just kind of winging it with you guys. So the one thing, um, like I mentioned previously, is I'd like to use the deoxid on on the uh, the power switch. So all I do is right now it's in the off position. Not even sure. Maybe if I put my hand like that. There we go. I like to put it. I just go. I just put a little dab. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. So it's a little dab. It kind of works its way in. And then what I do is I flip the switch over. And then I put one more drop on the other side. Okay. And that's it. And then I just kind of work it in. I just very, very lightly work it in just like that. And what that should do is remove any, I mean, not any, but remove some of the oxidation that's already there and then protect it from any further oxidation. And keep that switch running nice and smooth. All right. So actually, it's a good thing that we had that issue with the sensor because I would have forgot to do that as well. All right. Um, yeah, all these wires are kind of a mess. Ugh. Yeah. Um, I probably one thing that would have been good to do would have been to maybe um not have quite so long the wires. Um, again, this isn't a big deal. The only issue, I guess, you know, it's a transparent shell, but even so, when you put batteries in there, you won't be able to see it. So I'm not too worried about it. Let's go ahead and assemble this bad boy. Put everything in. Oops. All right, so we got our R trigger, which goes over here. Okay, got our L trigger. Beautiful. Yeah, I think we're not forgetting anything. I hope we're not. 
All right, bring the magnetic board back over. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys um, the what the video quality is like from this. And, and actually, it's I think it's pretty good. I, I know some folks have really high standards, but for for me, you know, composite video is um, more than adequate. And I mean, that's not to you know diminish mods like the um, like Woozles. Um, you know, consoleizer. That's a beautiful mod. Very challenging to do, um, but a very nice mod. Uh, but this is good. This to, this to me, I think, is more than adequate. Now, the other, th I will go through some of the things I think are, you know, minor inconveniences. Uh, but uh, you know, like one one of them being, you know, you, you can't attach obviously an external controller to this. That would have been great. You know, um, but you have to use obviously the onboard controls, not a big deal. And kind of like, I guess, like in a pinch, you know, this is probably pretty good um, for, you know, if you just want to connect it to a TV, show a friend, um, a game or something, you know. All right. Put that over there. Let's put the batteries in. And really, the other cool thing is, I mean, this works just on a pair of batteries, and you can have video out. I mean, how cool is that? So cool. So let's see here. All right, and we are up and running perfectly. Let's change the brightness a little bit. Bring it down. There we go. And then here you can change the palette. Uh, it doesn't really make too much sense for the GBA, but if you do play, like, original Game Boy games on this, all right, let me go ahead and... The moment y'all been waiting for. There we go. Um, but yeah, so, okay, so that mod is done. That is good. Um, I think I have a game over here. Here we go. So actually, someone was so kind and sent this over. Sort of Mana. I haven't really sat down and played it. Um, I just remember back in the day for the Super Nintendo Secret Mana. Great game. I'm assuming this is kind of part of the same series, but... Um, but here you can see the game is working and now what I have, let me, let me clean up my table a little bit uh, before we move on. But, uh, actually for those of you in the chat, what is your favorite Game Boy Advance game? Mine, um, for those who watch the channel probably know, mine is... Uh, Zero Mission, uh, Metroid Zero Mission, love that game. I always showcase it whenever I do a Game Boy Advance video. Um, it's one of the few games that I do showcase. Um, oh, guys, uh, I forgot to install. Um, you can't really see it, but this is the... It's not a big deal. You really don't need it. It's just kind of like an insurance thing. Um, but this is the film that went on top of the driver board. I might go and install that later, but it's, it's not the most crucial thing. Fantastic. All right, another successful mod. Okay, so the table's pretty clean. Hold on one second. All right, so let me show you the cable that this comes with. Uh, oh yeah, Castlevania is also a, a great, a great franchise, and Aria of Sorrow is a great game. So this is the cable it comes with. It's a custom cable, and this is the other thing that's a bit inconvenient: is if you do want sound coming to the TV, you got to plug in the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Um, but this is the um, video out. It's just your link cable, but it's pin three. AV is coming out on pin three. So, oh, hey, uh, scruffy looking RGB. What's up, Tito? Sorry, can't watch. I'll check this out later. All right, man. 
Uh, I know, uh, so Scruffy is out in Japan. He also has a really cool YouTube channel where he, he so he lives in Japan and he kind of goes shopping in like Akihabara or other places in Japan. Uh, and it's just interesting always to see like how readily available, um, <laughs> you know, retro consoles are out there and, you know, how they sell them as junk and, and all that stuff. And so cheaply, uh, it's just, you know, that's, I went to Japan once, and I thought that was always so cool. But yeah, anyway, Scruffy Looking RGB does uh, cool shopping videos in Japan if you're interested in that. So, um, oh, did I? Uh... Oh, yeah, no, okay, no, never mind. Um, yeah, so, all right. Um, let me plug this into my, uh, com my computer here. So... If I go here, y'all should hopefully, oh, no, y'all should see my capture. There we go. So we've got the capture running. I'm plugging it in. Y'all really can't see me doing it. I'm plugging it into my capture card. And now, oh, you know what? That does stink. You can't, okay, so, well, I'm plugging it in. That's the audio. And this is the AV going into the link port. And then you turn it on. Okay, so it's on. And then you hold L and R, I believe for five seconds. I'll have to double check that, but I think you hold this for one, two, three, four, five, there we go. It's in video out mode and there it is. And the, oh, why isn't the audio? Oh, so, and, oh, and hey, actually, uh, that's interesting. The, I can change the palettes, I think. Why is it, oh, oh there we go. Oh, wow, so you can also change the palettes. Um, sorry, here we go, let me show you that. So if you, the, the sensor is right there, so if you hit it, it uh, goes through the palettes. Um, Okay, so the interesting thing though is, hold on, let me get it to the right palette. I think that's the right one. The interesting thing is it's not, um, I don't hear the, oh, oh, is it because it's muted? Can y'all hear the audio for the game? Oh, y'all do hear the audio? How come I don't hear it? Is it really loud? Sorry about that. Um, turn it down. Why don't I hear it? That's weird. Okay, so well, anyway, so the audio, and let me let me press start, and maybe we can play a game. It's funny the, and I forget who gave this to me. I'm really thankful he, he actually sent it over with uh, a really cool game boy watch which i think is in my closet so i won't i won't grab it now but uh but yeah so but yeah what do y'all think of that quality i think the quality is pretty i mean it's a little bit soft but i think it looks pretty good right um i mean for being an all-in-one you know kind of package it's pretty impressive um but, uh, but yeah, actually, so I have an HDMI one also, which I made a video on, um, which is, is also a good option. But the only thing is it's, you know, oops, I touched the touch sensor. But the only issue with that is you need a HDMI, I believe, micro, which isn't a very common port. So you'll have to buy an adapter. I mean, I guess it's really no different from this. I mean, this one I'm using a, a special cable, so. Um, oh yeah, so. So uh, Blackish Justin, so yeah, this is connected to a RetroTINK 2X. So I don't have the 5X because that's fancy and really expensive. I'll hope, I mean, I'll probably get one one day or I'm, I'm either gonna get that or I might wait for the morph from uh, Pixel FX. Uh, actually, I'm probably gonna wait till that comes out because I might get that one. That looks pretty neat, um, so. Ugh. 
Mad Blaster. Okay, that's a good idea. Let me grab the HDMI one so I can compare it. Hold on one second. Oh, and actually, let me know if you're interested in seeing... I, I was thinking about making a video about this. Hold on one second while I... mod camera so I have it probably won't even fit oh my goodness but I, I've been thinking about doing like a collection video so y'all can see um, you know, all the mods that I've done over the year, you know, I guess years now, but um, but all these are different modded Game Boys. I have a video for each one of these, and even even these, my um, PC, the PC Engine GTs, and the Lynx, uh, and the Nomad. Actually, I, I, I did another video in, on the Nomad, but I just got a bunch, and so let me know if y'all want to see that. It might be interesting to do like a recap video or something, but oh, let me grab the HDMI. All right, so this is the HDMI modded one. And I made a video on this. I just need to be able to, I need to find the adapter. So hold, if you bear with me. So this is the HDMI micro port. We'll focus, yeah. So yeah, right there, you'll notice that obviously, well, this is a different Game Boy Advance, but obviously the other one doesn't have that. That's an extra, that's an HDMI port. So let me grab some batteries for this. It's also a really great kit. Um, Retro Game Repair Shop sells it. Um, I think it's kind of almost like a, was it drop-in? Oh, no, no, it's not, because you need to trim. Obviously, you need to trim that. Um, all right, so it works. Um, this one doesn't have palette changes. It's just a standard color. And if... If, the, if you notice, so like this tint, it looks kind of like yellow on camera. So that tint is non-existent. This is like white. The uh, stuff is like, for whatever reason, um, I can't really adjust the color, the white balance to make that look white. So in a lot of my videos, and I'll, and I'll have to mention it because I always forget to mention it, but sometimes the screen looks blue or looks green like in this case um, but in real life it doesn't it looks good it's really good looking so um, but yeah so let's see how that looks let me go back to the game feed oh did I touch it I probably touched it black and white all right so that's how that looks now um, if y'all bear with me one moment I gotta find the micro adapter. I thought I had it in here. Oh wait, is this it? Oh, that's not it. Um, y'all met. Uh, mind waiting one second. I'm just gonna go check. I have like a box of adapters and I think it's in there um, I'll be right back Don't leave
Found it. All right. Okay, so. Um, now, there's not really an easy way to switch it, but okay, just kind of remember how this looks. Oops, let's go to start. So, eh, I mean, I think it looks pretty good. Not bad. See the sort of mana. Maybe a little bit soft, but all right, now let's switch it to the other one. Let me take the game out. And then I'm going to actually have to... All right, so I'm plugging in the HDMI adapter. And I actually have to unplug ugh, the HDMI from the Retro 2 Retro Tank, which I just did. Now I plugged in HDMI. And now... Let's see how this looks. Turn it on. Oops. Oh, it is on. So HDMI, it should be feeding through. I think it, I think it auto switches. Well, let me unplug it, let's find out. Yeah, so it auto switches. So I'm gonna plug it in now. So when I plug it in, the screen turns off. But why am I not getting any signal? Hold on a second. Let's see if I can figure this out. Hmm. Why is that not showing? I wonder if my game capture uh Oh no, it was, it was capturing with the the retro tank. Why is it Hmm. Let me see. Uh, is it plugged in on all four ends? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean by that. All four ends. I mean, I think it's. I think the HDMI cable is plugged all the way in. Oh hey KLZ, um, dude, no problem. I'm glad you're you're enjoying the hobby, and it's a great hobby, lots of fun, um, and you're most welcome. And I I really appreciate the fact that you like the videos. Thank you. Oh, um, between the adapter is the cable in oh in the Elgato. Oh well, my Elgato is um. Is it's a PCI Express card, and it is plugged in. I mean, it was just work. So I basically unplugged the um, the cable that was in my retro tank. I I used that HDMI for for this. Wasn't this mod you mentioned in your video? It wasn't. Oh, oh yeah, you might be right. Um, actually, hold on a second. Let me try it. I don't remember if I did say that or not, um, but it could be that my Elgato just can't see it. Um, cause here, yeah, cause now you'll notice. So now I have my, I just plug the HDMI into uh, my retro tank. And when I turn that on and I make sure video out, I go to video out mode 
and we can see Game Boy. So, but that's that's with this. I can't believe this doesn't work. No, I thought. Did I not capture video for that vid for that one? Yeah, I think I remember the Elgato had some issues with some of my HDMI mods. I um, somebody want to pull up the video? Let me let me actually I'll, I'll pull up the video. Um, that's a good point. I don't remember. Um, but that'd be a bummer. Let's see here. So if I do macho, macho, HDMI, GBA. Aha. Actually, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen with y'all. And let's find out together what uh... oh oh no okay it does all right I was gonna say does does YouTube not show up on screen captures um oh no wait I did I did do a video out. Oh wait, no, maybe I didn't. Maybe that was my, was that my television screen? Yeah, I had to do video out on my TV because my Elgato wouldn't capture it. All right, good memory. Whoever uh, whoever said that, I, um, yeah, and this is me just doing, oh yeah, see? Could not capture footage with Elgop. Oh, but that's my HD60. I have a new one. So I guess it doesn't work with the HD60 or um, the ProCam, which is what I have now. Ugh, what a bummer. Okay. Well, sorry for wasting your time, everybody. Okay, who, who's, who said that? Who said that the video... Um, ah, so Sui, Sui Kagura. Sui. So, uh, Kagura, thank you. Good memory, man. Um, yeah, so I guess I really can't compare it for you because I, you know, I don't have like a TV here that has HDMI in. Um, it, it looked, I uh, see, it looked better on, yeah, no, it, on, honestly, on the TV, it looked really good. I think the pixels were really, really sharp. Um, but anywho, yeah, so. Let me go back to yeah. So um, oops, keep on. That's the only problem with the touch sensor. The touch sensor kind of you can bump it accidentally, and it will change the palette on you, which isn't always the greatest. But uh, well, I guess we did the mod, so. Maybe we can just chat a little bit. Y'all have questions about the mod, about other mods. Um, let me do the video out. Um, but yeah, open to open any questions, discussions. Um, what do y'all think about the quality of the stream? So I'm using the PC. Um, obviously, after the stream is done, I'm probably going to tweak a couple things. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah. No, yeah. The GBA player, similar video quality. I would agree with that. Hey, you're most you're most welcome, Ad Blaster. I mean, I'm I'm just glad so many people find the videos useful. That's just. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of, every time I think about it, it's, it's incredible you know, how many people watch the videos, and I'm glad they're really helpful, so thank you. Uh, let's see here. Would you say, uh, oops, um, what would you say is your favorite mod you've ever done? My favorite mod? That's a tough one. Um, I would say pretty much all of the HDMI mods I've done. So the PS1 Digital... That might be my favorite because the PS1 is probably one of my favorite consoles of all time. 
the DC Digital. Actually, that one's probably pretty close. The DC Digital and the PS1 Digital are both probably my favorite mods, because those are like two of my all-time favorite consoles. I'm just waiting for the PS2 Digital to come out, because, um, yeah, I really love that console too. So really, that whole generation, uh, I think it's the fifth generation, so Sega Dreamcast, GameCube, PS2... Um, I never really got into the Xbox until I did the Make Megahertz mod, but uh, that was also... That, that's kind of a console I want to get more into. I actually have some pretty cool Xbox videos coming out. Uh, at least two. I don't know when, but... Um, I, yeah, I just have a huge list of videos I need to make. And just not enough time. I mean, each, each video probably takes about... 30 to 40 hours. Probably another closer to 40 hours. So I work my normal 40 hour work week and then basically tack on another 40 hours and that's uh, for the for the channel. So um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, I need a good combo for a GBA. A good combo. You need a, I need a good combo. I'm not sure what you mean by that. A good combination of mods? Or oh, a good combination of shell colors, maybe? Um, yeah, the sky's the limit with if you're trying to figure out what kind of shell color to get, or shell design. I mean, they have ones with graphics like this on it. You know, this one's got some Zelda design on here. Um, then you can just do a whole bunch of different color combinations, you know, mix and match or get pre pre-made ones. Um, but yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever, you know, you fancy it, I'm sure you can make it work. I mean, here, I, yeah, even this one's like a bunch of different colors too. I think I just picked random ones like purple buttons, this teal color and the gray sides. I don't know how I feel about the gray sides, but, but yeah, tons of options. Um, can you choose not to install slash have touch? Yes, yes. So actually a lot of the times the touch, the touch is optional. Um, for some mods, you will be stuck with the the brightness. Um, but if you have no desire to change the palettes or the brightness, then yeah, you can. And then some even have uh, ways where you can solder to various test pads and you can change the brightness with certain button combinations. So that's always a possibility as well. Uh, this one, I. Actually, I think this one does have that feature. So yeah, the touch sensors are optional, I think for the most part. Um, if you want to have the features that they provide, you might need to do additional soldering though. So. And then uh, Sui Kagara says, love the stream and the retro headphones. You oh yeah, so yeah, these are my retro. I got a few retro Sony headphones, but um, but yeah, these are kind of the ones I would use, you know, I have like a, an Iowa, a cassette, a portable cassette player, uh, that I use sometimes. And these are the ones, these are the headphones I use with them. So thank you. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you like them. Um, I wanted to ask, have you ever recapped your GBA and do you think it's important? Um, so I have yet, actually, I take that back. I think I did an audio mod and I think I replaced just one of the electrolytic capacitors I don't think it was all of them um, and it, I think I replaced it with a ceramic one and I don't think it's necessary yet these are still pretty modern so I don't think these are really now unless they were in extreme conditions like a very hot attic or in a moist environment like a basement then maybe potentially yeah they could be going bad but by and large, if you took care of the Game Boy and it's in a, you know, a nice environment, you know, temperature wise, as well as humidity, then it should be fine, I think. Uh, not, not absolutely necessary. Um, ooh, I'm starting to fall behind the questions here, guys. Uh, so let me see. Do you prefer these video out mods over using the Game, uh, the Game Cube uh, Game Boy Player? And uh, and Game Boy interface. Um, I will be honest. I don't use the GameCube um, Game Boy Player often, mostly because my Game Boy isn't really set up. 
Um, it's actually in a bin down there. The one I modified uh, with the, uh, oh gosh, what was that called? Uh, it's like the ODE, the GC, GC Digital, or no, um, I think, I forget what it's called. But basically it's like an optical drive emulator for the GameCube. So that one I modified, but I don't really use it too much. Um, so it's nice to just have the video out feature kind of right here. I can just pop this out and, and start playing. Um, and then the other one is the consoleizer. That one is nice because it has HDMI out. Oops. And, um, and you can plug in a wireless NES controller. So I like that. So actually, I, I will say, yes, the, the, the Game Boy Player for the GameCube is nice because you can use the controller. Um, if I had to choose between the two, I think I would choose the, the GameCube, uh, Game Boy Player, um, because you can use the controller. Okay, next one is, these videos are helpful, I like the stream. Johnny, I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. Um, I would love to do more of these, but like I said, you know, I just... Whenever I do a, a normal video, that takes up so much time. I really there was a, a, a stretch of a stretch of time where I did try to do a stream. I think every Thursday. I did that maybe for a month, but it was just exhausting. I couldn't keep it up. So, but I will try to do more. Uh, may, maybe I'll maybe I'll do like a once every other month. I'll instead of do a video, I'll do a stream. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys want to see actually? That's a really good question. Do you guys want to see more streams? Um, is there a way to do a poll in this? I don't even know if there's a way to do a poll. Um, eh, anyway. But yeah, if you want to do more streams, just type it in, you know, the chat. Um, let's see here. Next comment is... I'm planning to be modding consoles and handhelds very soon. Nice. Awesome, Johnny. Oh, uh, I skipped one. Can you actually use wire glue instead of soldering? I have actually never used wire glue. I'm not even sure what that is. Is it like some sort of conductive glue? I'm sure you could, but the only problem is it sounds like it might be permanent. So if you want to reverse a mod, you might not be able to easily reverse it. Um, hey, Anthony, Anthony Eager, dude, thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, he writes, appreciate your vids, mate. Hey, not a problem, dude. Uh, I'm glad you enjoy the videos. And Anthony, I guess is from Australia. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then, and then Phen uh, Phenonymous says, Dude, you should have way more. Yeah, I know. I um, I mean, I'm really just happy with the subscribers I have. I really appreciate you guys. And honestly, like, I think you guys are probably the. I mean, whenever I read my comments, they're always so so positive, and I'm like super appreciative of that. And honestly, I've like so far had a really good experience, um, because I know sometimes the uh, the comment section can get pretty to toxic, but you guys, you guys are always amazing. So um really thank you guys really appreciate you guys um and thank you for the comment really appreciate it and then uh blackish justin says i need to get better at soldering before i attempt the ps1 digital mod yeah i um honestly the the one mod i tried it's a little bit easier than the ps1 digital and that's the uh dc digital the dreamcast so the pins are a little bit uh thicker a little bit spaced more apart than the PS1, but uh, it just takes practice. And and when I did the when I did the DC Digital, that was my first mod that was using a flex cable like that, you know, soldering directly to a chip. And um, I got you know, knock on wood, I got lucky and I, I was able to pull it off. But I learned so much doing that. So I wish there was like. Um, like a practice kit or something that you could buy to sort of practice doing like that flex cable soldering because it, it is definitely, I mean, it's not like soldering to a pad, an individual pad, like doing these Game Boy 
uh, mods, which is quite a bit simpler. Um, but once you do it, you, you learn so much and it's honestly, it's hard to convey, um, I guess through a video, uh, how to exactly solder to that. I, I, I will recommend, and I'm not sure, if, I'm sure many of you are familiar, but, uh, Voltar, um, has a great YouTube channel where he really kind of breaks down the soldering, uh, probably better, probably better than I do. So, um, if you haven't checked out Voltor, I would check out Voltor. Uh, and he, I think he has a P, I'm pretty sure he has a PS1 digital, uh, mod video. Um, you can always watch mine, but his is also really good. Um, and he does really good, uh, instruction on how to, um, he, he does like a drag soldering technique, which I'm not good enough to do that. And I don't feel comfortable. So the way I do it is a little bit slower. Um, but I think you still get pretty good results. And I, I like taking my time, but uh, the drag soldering technique is an advanced one, which I'm still trying to work on. Uh, maybe I'll get it one day, but yeah, uh, I definitely um, maybe do some more Game Boy kind of mods. And once you feel like maybe you're a little bit comfortable, I would just try it. And it, the only thing is I, I agree they're expensive. The mods are expensive and now the consoles are getting expensive. So it does stink if you mess up. Um, but really, it, this hobby is just about trying, you know, if you try um, and you mess up, yeah, it could be could be money down the drain. I agree. That's always a bummer, but you got to try. You always got to try. So and challenge yourself. But anyway, whew, I talked about that for a while. Uh, so Thomas Philippe Philippe says um, your channel has the most epic intro in all the retro community. I'd like to know how you make them. I was planning on doing a video about that. I do get a lot of comments asking about how I do like the spinning console and all that stuff. And I was thinking of maybe doing like, a, you know, maybe if I reach, I don't know, 100,000 subscribers, I'll do like a video about that. Cause I do get a lot of people asking about it, but I just kind of, I have so many other videos that I'm making that I didn't want to waste a video, especially since it's not really, kind of what my channel's about. My channel's not really about videography, even though I love videography. Uh, so I really enjoy making the YouTube videos. Um, honestly, I feel like making the video and the editing sometimes is more fun than the actual modding itself. M modding can be stressful, but of course it's really rewarding, especially when, when everything works. Um, but the filming process and more specifically the editing process to me is the most enjoyable. Um, so I do plan on maybe doing a video at some point, um, but I just, you know, since I can only do one video a week, I, I thought about it and just kind of not wasting a week on a video like that. But it, you know, if I did a video on that, that basically be one whole week where I didn't do a video on like modding a console, which I know most of you guys are coming to the channel for. So, um, but yeah. So, uh, sorry, I, I, I gotta answer these questions more and more quickly. Um, Brian F says, uh, oops, uh, all right, jumped around a little bit. Uh, Brian F says, Benved had an easier to do mod for the Lynx Model 2. Yes, I did a video on that one. Did they ever do one for the original model? No, the, so the, unfortunately with the original model, the LCD uh, flex cable is, I believe it's soldered directly to the board, very much like the Game Gear. Um, the Model 2 had a nice, um, ZIF connector. You just basically can plug in the LCD connector, unplug it. So basically you unplug it, the old one, and you just plug in the new one, um, for the Lynx Model 2. Uh, but the original Lynx, unfortunately, I believe is like the Game Gear, and the LCD is soldered directly to the PCB. So, um, yep. And then Phenonymous says, could always mimic the Hello Kitty Dreamcast translucent, uh, uh, pink and gray two tone. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I don't have a Hello Kitty console yet. Um, I probably will get one at some point though. Um, and then Mad Blast says, Boxy Pixel mods are my favorite. Actually, that's a good point. I almost forgot about that. I absolutely love Boxy Pixel mods. Or really, I love metal uh, metal consoles. 
And because uh, I have quite a few of them now. Um, let me see. I have two Game Boy, actually, well, three Game Boy Colors, two using his regular um, Game Boy Color shell. I have the one that converts it to the Game Boy Pocket shell. And then I have uh, the DMG CM3, so it's like an emulation handheld. And, oh, and then of course the unhinged, I have the unhinged SP. But yeah, boxy pixel mods are fantastic. Michael says, as I've been following your channel for a while now and just have to say you're doing an amazing job. Michael, thank you so much. Uh, love your work. Also, just got my, ah, MC2 SIO recently, and I've been playing it so much. Yeah, so that's, so yeah, I, that's a, another thing. A lot of folks are um, trying to get that uh, from Helder, and Helder, believe me when I say he's working hard to build as many as he can as fast as he can. I think every, so if you're looking to get the MC2 SIO mod, I believe uh, every Friday he is dropping a batch of like one or 200, maybe not 200, maybe like 100 or maybe more. Um, so eventually, if you're looking for that, you should be able to get one eventually. Um, it's just that, um, you know, it's, I think a lot of people really want, I think, yes, he actually has a mailing list and I think he's got like a thousand people on it. So it might be a few weeks, but once all the demand has been met, you should be able to get one fairly easily. Because he has, he, he ordered parts for a ton, so he has the material to make a lot of them. It's just, his bottleneck, actually, I was just talking to him, uh, his bottleneck is the shell uh, printing. So 3D printing the shell, he just can't make those fast enough. So that's really what's uh, holding up production for him, is because he actually had to outsource and get more people to help him print those because I think at home he can only print, print just a few a day. Um, so he's getting some help trying to get those, get more printed. So, yep, great mod. It's a really good mod. Uh, do, 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 do. And let's see here. Okay, so uh, Anthony Eager is asking a question. Hey, mate, tried your GBA SP IPS mod the other day. Unfortunately, I can't get the wire uh, to attach to the ribbon cable. Tried using flux and no... Ooh, okay, so a couple things. So the pad on the ribbon cable... I'm assuming this is for just an IPS modded uh, uh, Game Boy Advance SP. Um... Now, what I fear is maybe you applied too much heat and the pad lifted and came off. So you might, do, do you still have, can you still see the gold pad, Anthony? Um, hopefully you're still on. Um, I, oh, wow. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna have to really, <laughs> I'm like way behind on the comments. Um, so Anthony, uh, Quick question, if you can in the chat, just let me know if on your ribbon cable, if that uh, brightness adjustment pad, is it still gold? Like, can you still see the gold color or does it look like it fell off? Cause I'm thinking maybe you applied too much heat to it and it came off. So, and if that's the case, you'll need a new ribbon cable, unfortunately. Cause it should be pretty easy to solder to. Um, you really shouldn't need any flux. Okay. Um, any updates to the retro gaming cart? A light gun would be a cool addition. Any updates to the retro gaming cart? Not sure. What's the retro? Yeah, I'm not sure what the retro gaming cart is. I'm trying to think. Um, there's the cart reader, but that doesn't have anything to do with a light gun. Retro gaming cart. Oh, do you mean the, uh, the Mr. The Mr. Project? Um, so, fin uh, Phenonymous is asking, any updates to the retro gaming cart? Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, let me know what your, which cart you're talking about, and, uh, 
I'll try to answer it, because yeah, I can't think of what the retro gaming cart is, but... And then 60-bit RGP, sorry, RPG Labs is saying, imagine playing Sword of Mana, thinking the characters are gonna look like that, look like the uh, Herculean, Herculean models in the opening cinematic. Oh, yeah, I mean, they're just sprites. I mean, that's how most of these games are. <laughs> um, GC Loader, GC Loader... More streams. Okay, so 16-bit RPG Labs um, says more streams. Okay. More streams. Michael says more streams. All right. Robo Messer Wonner. More streams. All right, so you guys like streams. I, I will try to do more streams. It's just it's just really hard to uh, fit them into my schedule. Uh, but, but if I do take a week off, it's easy for me to do a stream. So I might do that maybe like a once every eight weeks or something. And then, um, let's see here. Any more questions? Only if it doesn't add to it. Do yeah. I mean, th that's my main thing. I, th the last thing I would want to do um, is have the streams impact production or the quality of the videos, because uh, that's my main goal is to make high quality videos for you all. Um, so really the only way I'd probably be able to do it sustainably would be to kind of skip a video one week um, and do a stream instead. Um, but I'll, actually I'll do a I'll do a poll and see what y'all think. Um, the only problem is because I do only one video a week, that is only how many weeks are in a year? 54? 52? I forget. Um, but that's only a, a little over 50 videos a year. And I feel like there's just so many. I have so many. I wish I could show you. Actually, I can probably. Eh, well, no. it's. Uh, but I got a whole wall over here of bins. And each. How many bins I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, I got like 30 bins. And this isn't even all of them. And each bin is a video. Because uh, each bin has a mod or something, uh, and the only pr and the problem is I have those 30. I got more other mods that I need to do, and then um, I learned about a new one that I, I want to do. So it's just and then some some mods will just be so outdated. Probably pro there's probably a couple outdated ones in there that I might just never do a video on, um, and that's the problem. That's why I like doing. I would love to do more than one video a week. Uh, so I can get through these uh, mods to show you guys. Um, but if I do a stream like every eight weeks, that's, you know, how many less videos or mod... I guess I could do streams of those mods. That could be. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'll think about it. But uh, sorry, I'm just talking to myself here. Um, all right, let's get see if there's more questions. Man, I've hung on to my N64 Digital and haven't felt confident enough to do it. I've only done NES games so far. Yeah, uh, I mean, the N64 one is also quite difficult, uh, the N64 Digital. So Zero uh, uh, made that comment. And yeah, I, I would totally agree. And if, you, if you're really nervous about it, um, I would definitely say, yeah, hand it off to uh, one of those professional modders. There's quite, there's so many of them. Uh, I don't have... Uh, experience with them but uh, I've seen I follow some on Twitter and they do great work um, there's one called dragon something and then of course uh, um, Voltar Voltar does you know he has modding services um, who else who else there's a few of them and you can find them on a uh, on Twitter or maybe even Instagram um, but definitely always you know check to see if uh, if you can see their prior work that's a nice thing about seeing the ones on twitter because you can actually see how they're doing other people's mods they show off their work and some of them are really impressive so a lot of good modders out there um oh and uh uh, Fickle Pickle says, I think Mako might have sampled a practice kit. Yeah, I mean, I'll, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, if he has one for sale, 
So Mako is another uh, really talented uh, Game Boy modder, so um, I would check out his YouTube channel too. And he, if he come, he he has actually released quite a few products. He's done an SP battery mod. Um, he's done. Uh, well, he has the new. I forget what it's called exactly, but it's basically uh, a similar product to the Unhinged, which will be coming out soon. Which I will be doing a video on when that does come out. Um, but yeah, if Mako is coming out with a practice kit, I would pick it up just to practice. Um, Cause yeah, flex cable soldering is very challenging. It's probably as a modder, that's probably one of the most challenging things you can do. Um, and then Phenonymous is asking, do you ever mess with CRT repairs? I don't. So I have one CRT. Um, it's an eight inch uh, Sony PVM that I actually got from uh, Retro, uh, gosh, what's his name? Uh, his name is Steven and his YouTube channel is um, Retro Tech. Retro Tech, and I believe it's Retro Tech, let me double check. Retro Tech uh, CRT, let's see, I think that's what it is. Yeah, so his YouTube channel is Retro Tech. And the whole channel is dedicated to learning about CRTs, fixing CRTs, uh, calibrating CRTs. So, and his name is Steven. Um, so definitely check him out if you are interested in, uh, um, you know, a refurbishing or repairing a CRT. Um, he also he also I believe sells. Uh, CRTs or if you have a CRT that's damaged she'll repair it for you he has repair services so definitely a really good uh, resource I would check him out for sure um, but I personally um, don't really mess with CRTs too much <laughs> what's your favorite IPS kit for the GBA um, that's a tough one honestly they're all uh, it depends on what you're looking for because there's just so many options now. All right, my battery is running out for this, so let's let's change the camera. You can do this. I got it just chatting. There we go. Um, yeah. Uh, honestly, there really hasn't been a IPS kit that I was unhappy with. Because um, the main goal of the IPS kit is to really just improve. Uh, the video quality and I have to say that all of them do it the one that I kind of ran into an issue with was the original drop-in IPS kit uh, that panel had like a uh, kind of a bluish tint to it but they repaired it in the following revision and oh hey uh, phenonymous thank you so much I really appreciate it um, thank you for the super chat um, uh, what was I saying? So, oh yeah. So honestly, I, I would say the ones that I am most happy with are the easiest ones to install. So the drop-in kits, I would say the drop-in kits are my favorite ones because nobody likes to trim, trim shells. That that's honestly one of the most annoying things about mods is trimming shells. And the nice thing about the drop-in kits also is if you have like a rare Game Boy Advance variant, um, you can just drop in the IPS kit and not worry about damaging your shell. It's 100% reversible. Um, and yeah, you can play your rare, I mean, I don't have a rare GBA SP, but you can play your rare variant GBA SP, or Game Boy Advance uh, with a really nice screen. So drop-in kits. I would get a drop-in IPS kit. Um, those would be my favorite ones. Um, I think I'm catching up here a little bit. Uh, uh, I just lost my spot. Um, oh, if I never soldered before, what should I practice on before trying on a GBA? Ah, great question. If you go to Amazon, there are a, and I think, did I make it? No, I didn't make a video on this, but if you go to Amazon, there is uh, solder practicing kits. And basically it just it's just a raw, uh, PCB it doesn't have any components on it, just a bunch of pads. 
And I think it does come with some components and you can practice soldering on that. I would definitely buy, I believe it's just called a solder practice kit and they're cheap. Actually, I bought a, um, you can even buy really cool projects. I bought like a, like a digital clock that you have to build um, through soldering. A lot of it is soldering. So that's a really fun, so you can just look for simple like solder projects and Amazon has a bunch, even eBay, Amazon and eBay have a bunch. So I would definitely try that out and you can really fine tune your soldering skills, really understand like uh, where you need to touch on the pad. You need to touch the pad and the wire. Anything that needs to be soldered together needs to be both heated. Um, but also watch videos because the, the videos will give you the technique. And then with the kit, you can practice the technique. Um, so I hope that answers, I hope that answers the question. Um, don't be afraid to deviate once in, in a while in relation to your content you make. Be, you'd be surprised how much people, oh, okay, yeah, that's true. I, 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 and I've actually been experimenting lately with different types of, I mean, if you notice, mostly I do like Game Boy or handheld mods, but I've been doing uh, console mods and people have been really receptive with those. So I think I'm going to be doing more um, like that PS2 video um, did really well. And unfortunately, there's just not a lot of mods for the PS2, but I do have a couple PS2 videos that will be coming out. Again, I say soon, but you know, I do one video a week, so um, it might be a, a few weeks, a couple of months before I get to them. But um, oh, and then per Pernam says, can you try a Game Boy Classic game? Oh, on this mod. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. All right. So let me go back to... Not that one. This one. All right. So I'm going to put in... Flash cart. All right, so this is uh, Game Boy games. Let's play a Game Boy Color game. Pokemon Crystal. I'll just let that um, play. Now, now actually, uh, well, Pokemon Crystal, I think that's a Game Boy Color, so that will have its own um, color palette. But if it was just a regular, like Pokemon Blue or Red, I can kind of run through the color palettes and you can see how that uh, changes them. But yeah, so there, we'll have that running in the background for uh, Pernum. Uh, and then John Jarvis says, any plans to check out Mako's anodized aluminum slate uh, mod once it drops? Absolutely. I will be doing a video on that uh, as soon as I can. Um, have you seen the GB? I have seen the GB operator. I think I tried to buy it once, but I think it was sold out. I, actually, I am planning on doing a video. Again, I, so many videos, so many little time. But I'm going to be doing a video comparing all of the... Um, uh, the ROM dumpers uh, for the Game Boy Advance because I actually have a few of them and one of them I really just been you know meaning to do a video on is the Joey because I haven't done a video on that yet um, but I'd like to do a video comparing them all to include the GB operator which I don't have but I'll try and get so yeah I hope that answers your question um, and then John Jarvis says it's a GBASP shell replacement yeah, yeah. Um, yes, uh, that, that's a. I totally agree with this. So John, or sorry, Nathan uh, uh, Shiner says the best and worst part of retro console modding is that so much work is done by small groups and single individuals. Yeah, a lot of these projects are passion projects, and 
um, you know, a lot of the times it's, you know, this is a pretty small niche community. Um, so sometimes it's just not feasible to really just mass produce these mods. It would be nice. I mean, which is why a lot of these folks do open source them, which is great, but then you have to kind of source everything yourself. You need to get the PCBs manufactured, and even that in itself can be expensive. But yeah, it is the best, I agree, but it is also kind of one of the drawbacks. Um, you know, this is a niche community and, you know, one person's passion project. There might be a, a few folks who really want it, um, but unfortunately it might be just too expensive to uh, make these mods uh, mass produced. Uh, especially if some folks just, you know, just a small group of people will buy it. Yeah, it's kind of like a weird balancing. It's a great small niche community but because of that sometimes it's hard to get mods or some mods just never get made and um yep i agree with that yeah mad blaster makes a good point um we got a great great group of uh talented and very knowledgeable folks on the discord server so if you haven't joined the discord server check it out um a lot of really smart folks on there that are really, really helpful that will, um, I think, by and large, uh, answer your questions. Mad Blaster being one of them, he helps out a lot of folks. So, um, And, oh, hey, we got Graphics Gear uh, on, the, uh, on the chat. So Graphics Gear makes some really good, and I made a video, um, I think I have some here. So for those of you who really like the the PC Engine or the Turbo Graphic 16, uh, Graphics Gear makes these really cool um, inlays for the controllers. So I mean, I mean, I got a whole bunch here. I way way more than I, I should just give these away. I don't know the best way to do it, but these are um, really just. I mean, they look like the original when you put them in. So these are the inlays that go on the controllers. So definitely check out graphics here. Got some cool stuff. They got some cool decals for the PC Engine. I'm not sure if they have other consoles. They might. Oops. But uh, I think they focus on the Turbo Graphics PC Engine. Um. All right. I think I'm catching up, guys. I'm almost there. To the in the in the chat. Uh, oh, hey, and Graphics Gear says he has a tons of a, a lot of those soldering kits, and uh, if uh, you know if you guys want one, he's willing to send them out if you pay postage. That's really nice. Like I said, great great community. Um, Oh, and then uh, Sui Kagura is asking or is saying if you if you do a drive diagnostic PS2 video. Ah, yes, actually, I don't know if it would be a diagnostic video, but I have a PS2 with a bad uh, DVD drive, which I was just going to replace because um, actually the laser was completely gone, missing. I mean, I, I guess a person got to it before me, and the laser was gone. Uh, so I had to buy a new laser, um, so, but I would, I guess, in that video kind of go over how to sort of take off the rails, clean them, re-lube them, same thing with the gears. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing that anytime soon, but uh, it is one of the many videos I'd like to do. Um, Um, hey, how's it going? S S13. Hope you're doing good too. Actually, I hope everybody on chat. Hope everybody on chat's doing good. Um, actually, yeah. So Zero is saying in regards to branching out your content, I really like to. I really like your uh, setup cart video. If you get an upscaler, it would be cool to see how you manage multiple co consoles. 
Um, it was my favorite part of making the setup. Yeah, I plan on actually expanding that cart. I kind of want to put more consoles on it. So, because I live in a small apartment, I just don't have a lot of space. So a lot of my consoles live in storage, in storage bins, and I only take out the ones that I'm playing. Um, but now that I have the cart, I actually have like five or six consoles on there, uh, which is great. So. Hey, Mashinacho, have you heard of any 2DS XL hardware mods? Um, so that's a mod. There's a mod I want to do. There's a, a video out mod. I don't know if it's for the 2DS. I know they have it for the 3DS. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I guess because the two... I guess it depends on which 2DS. They have, like, that flat one, and they got the one that folds. Um, but I do plan on doing now that... Well. I actually just ordered a new motherboard for uh, that bricked uh, 3DS um, that I'm going to replace, and I might do a 3DS mod for it. Um, but yeah, but yeah, guys, it's getting kind of late here. I'm going to try and finish. I think we got most of the questions. I'm almost at the end. So Foxtrot Fling, all the way from Pasadena, California. How's it going? Um, and then, that would be an awesome video. Thanks for the answer. GB Opera. Yep, yep, yep. Working on a V2. Um, unhinged SP. Cool. Oh, and Graphics here is working on NES in inlays. Nice. Yes. Keith Courage. Classic. Um, my PS2's network card has stopped working. I am gutted to not um i am gutted to not sure if it's the card or the console port that's a yeah i don't know um it could be i know there's like a little ribbon cable in there maybe it just came loose um might be worth checking that opening it up and checking that out and the last comment i caught up oh i missed the build the build part three hours mini marathon have we been on for three hours? How long have we been on? Oh yeah, basically three hours. But yeah, guys, it is almost 9.30 where I am, which is just outside of DC, Washington, DC. So I think I'm gonna have to call it uh, an evening. Um, oh, got a couple more comments. Oh, great video. Yep, thanks Mad Blaster. Um, Rob Singh says, uh, been following you for a while funny story i bought a modded gbc here in sydney australia and it came with a note to say to see all the features of the mod visit the macho what oh really hey that's really cool wow okay word gets around that's awesome that stuff like that just always boggles my mind um but yeah um and then Soul Eater 187 says, from what I've heard so far, the 2DS XL is a 3DS without, yes, that's true. It'd be great to have video out. Yeah, so I'm definitely checking those out. Unfortunately, those video out mods are only sold in Japan. And I think you need to uh, basically go through a proxy, one like Sendico, which I'll probably do, um, in order to have them purchase it for you and then send it to you. Um, but yeah. But I will do a 3DS video as soon as I get one of those. Um, and uh, yeah, all right, guys. Yeah, I think very good. I appreciate you all on the, uh, you know, on the chat, on the stream. And yeah, I, I definitely want to do more of these. So um, yeah, I'll probably do a poll and maybe maybe like once every, I don't know, like two months or something. Uh, so that'd be six streams a year. I don't know that might be good I, I could probably I could probably live with that but but all right guys um it's getting late and I will see you guys next Thursday with the nomad uh mod video which I'm really excited about that is such a cool mod it I will warn you it is a very difficult mod um there, there are some optional things that I did in there which you don't have to do but um but anywho all right, guys, I will uh, talk to you later. Thanks again, and uh, be safe out there, guys.